Civil engineer, Dr. George Soper. An expert in the new sciences of sewage, sanitation, and disease. I have a house in Oyster Bay. I ran it out, or at least I tried to. Go on. The daughter of the last family, she became ill <coughs> with typhoid. Typhoid is caused by a bacteria <coughs> called Salmonella typhi. If you ingest this bacteria, it multiplies within your stomach and gets into your lymphatic system and ultimately into the blood, where it can cause an infection called blood poisoning. It also causes bleeding within your stomach. Untreated, 10 to 20% of patients with typhoid fever can die. Soper is interested in the spread of infectious diseases, and typhoid in particular. Five more of the household were struck down by luck. None died. But now, everyone fears my property is infected. I am ruined. Unless, Dr. Soper, you can find the cause. Typhoid was associated with poverty, with unclean circumstances, and scientists postulated that perhaps it was rising up from the sewers. So it was puzzling that such an affluent family would be affected. Soper searches high and low for the invisible germs that cause typhoid. In the latter 19th century, a new science develops called bacteriology. This science allows scientists to isolate the microscopic bacteria that cause disease and even trace them back to their source. This is a revolutionary advance. But Soper's search for the typhoid bacteria is unsuccessful. Come. Mr. Thompson. Dr. Sober. Well, I have been up to my shoulders in your sewers. And your sewers are perfectly fine, sir. And your water. The local food also. Nothing. Do you have the list of your clients and staff that I requested? Soper searches for any change in the household that could have brought in the typhoid. Aside from the family, were any of these people new to the house at the time of the outbreak? Well, I believe the cook, um, Mary, Mary Mallon. Operator, get me Long Island 371. With little else to go on, Sopa tracks down the cook's previous employers. And it was definitely typhoid that killed her. Yes. I am most sorry to hear that. Might I inquire who your cook was at that time? A lady called... Mary something. Uh... Uh... Mary Mallon. Mary Mallon. Tough Irish constitution, we all said. Helped us nurse the sick, never a thought for herself. She helped to nurse my daughter. We gave her a bonus for that, you know. You are the eighth household I have spoken to where she worked. Seven of them suffered typhoid outbreaks while she was working there. But she was never ill. But she was never ill. Thank you. You've been most helpful. <coughs> 22 people contracted typhoid while Irish immigrant Mary Mallon cooked for them. Soper begins to suspect this is more than just bad luck that Mary carries the disease. But he cannot track her down until months later, when there is a typhoid outbreak a few blocks from Soper's New York home. Mary? Mary Mallon. It is you, isn't it? Dr. George Soper investigating the typhoid outbreak in Oyster Bay. There have been a number of cases in houses where you have worked, I believe. There have. Though God's mercy, I've never caught it myself. Luck of the Irish, as they say. I'm afraid you may indeed have had it, but perhaps so mild that uh, you did not recognize it. No, no, I I've never been. Are you suggesting I made them people sick? I'd never work as a cook again. I came from Ireland to escape the poorhouse, and that's where you'd be sending me. 
I have done a scientific analysis. The pattern of infection, it all points to you, Mary. I will need some samples to confirm it. Uh, blood, uh, feces, uh, urine. Get out. Get out now, you devil! Mary's reaction was understandable. When people carry a disease, they expect to have had fallen ill from it beforehand, especially something as virulent as typhoid. The idea that someone could carry a disease and not have any symptoms was revolutionary, even to the medical profession. 